Well, hello, dear friends. Very excited. Um, I have now got the Easter edition of Daphne's diary, and it's this one here, number two of 2023. And I was really, really excited to get this because it's just got so many things that mean so much to me in it. So I have had a sneak peek, but you'll be glad that I did because I've got a couple of ideas. <clears throat> excuse me, that will link up with what I'm about to say. So obviously this is an Easter theme and as you can see here some beautifully decorated eggs and there's chickens and there's bound to be loads more of these inside. So again the covers make beautiful beautiful covers for your own journals and if we just have a look here at some of the pages and I'm going to try and get them all in because they are quite tall pages. <clears throat> we have these lovely little images of the rabbits and the eggs at the bottom and that in itself would just make a gorgeous border. Or you could use something like that as well as a border and then you've got these lovely lovely sort of pale blue backgrounds which have these delicate little prints of the eggs in them and that that would also make quite nice backgrounds for things if you are watching for the first time I've often said to people don't throw away this text it's rather charming and if you could cut it out as a background for um, a tag or something like that they're really great this is one of the treasure pages in a Daphne's diary, simply because you have so much on two pages. <clears throat> so the first thing that I do is I would cut out these little words and phrases that you have here. I'd cut out these little numbers because they're quite nice for putting onto things. And then you just have a multitude of different images that you could use on their own or in combination. So you could cut that out as a whole or you could fussy cut that. You've got a nice stem of flowers. You've got a whole lot of different little eggs here and here. Whoops, I don't know if you can see that one. These pages are tall. So they've got little eggs here and some chickens. So you've got themes of chickens. You've got themes of some cherries. You've got some flowers, pots, gardening. There's just so much always. And then out of all the little bits and pieces are left, that are left over, you have just wonderful textures that you can cut out. Textured backgrounds, different colours. Don't throw that away. And then on this spread, it's a lovely story about somebody in Spain and they make these beautiful beeswax candles. But I can just see this lovely spread here as being a sort of a cover for a book. Um, I just like the colours. And there is one that's got similar colouring over there as well. So if you wanted to make quite a tall book, you could have one as the front and one as the back. Um, <clears throat> or you could fold it in half so you'd have something like that as a very sort of tall book or obviously you could fold it in half that way <clears throat> I actually took some um, A4 printed posters that we had well they weren't posters they were just I suppose memes really um, that we'd done we had a prayer conference at church and I was one of the people leading the um, conference with there were another four people and there was just some lovely um, papers left lying around and now I made those into junk journals but I made some long books and they were really lovely so I was pleased about that. Um, lovely sort of just imagery here that you could use and you could fussy cut quite a lot of that out and here again some lovely little cups and things so I mean if you were doing a, um, a journal that was traveling or camping or picnicking or to do with food you've got lots here that you can cut out as well. Um, nice sort of tonal colors here very soft muted colors which you could use um, and then of course you could do different things so you could cut out just the doorway here and have that just as a feature on perhaps a, a front page of a book or you could have just that as a tag or you could have just that as a little tag cut out um, look at that lovely charming balustrade here Sorry, I really struggle because this is much wider than my camera allows for. Um, yeah, so just lovely, lovely imagery everywhere you look. And look at this, it's so sweet. They've even got this little magnifying glass lying on the pavement outside. I mean, that's really quirky. <laughs> okay, this page, not a lot of sort of imagery and things like that, but you have got this really nice set of cutlery you've got some nice little watercolor things here and the watercolor bubbles that you could use lovely big number that you could use for um, just embellishing a page or a ticket 
and then you could cut out some of these little things just and use them as the headings and put the images underneath um, making up little tags and that Quite an interesting story of somebody that does the sculptural art using mostly vintage fabrics and cloth and you've got these lovely pieces of lace that run throughout this theme here that you could fussy cut in this lovely sort of soft soft sage green um, yeah lots of lovely imagery here nice old-fashioned teapot that you could use fun Easter thing so just look at this this has got a load of stuff that you can use so you start off with these lovely big borders here and you've got one at the top and one at the bottom which have these lovely dots on so those could be used perhaps on a belly band you could use them on their own <clears throat> you've got these that you can push out little boxes or fussy cut no you'd fussy cut these ones and they're printed on both sides so that's really nice and they've got marks where you do the folds and then you've got big chunks of card that you can actually use for making a tag or you could fold it over to make it a cover of a little book um, don't throw those away those are gems and I will link um, a video that I did a while ago just using up the pieces on a page um, to show you how much you can make there's another little Easter box or basket that you could do this one I thought had quite a lot of potential you apart from sort of being able to fussy cut those things out you could cut those out as phrases to put in a journal um, depending on what you were making mostly sort of food related things but that would be quite a useful thing and then you've got these lovely borders which can be used for tickets you could use them just as an edge to a page I missed one here okay again lovely lovely flowers lovely borders and do look out for all these textures that you get here because you know if you're trying to find a piece of scrapbooking paper or printed paper that's got those textures you're going to be hard come by so keep an empty Pringleton or some sort of container and maybe just one of those containers that has your cling wrap in and um, collect all your strips okay just some nice recipes again some lovely textured paper and the repeat of the little eggs which are rather fun I quite like those um, when I lived in South Africa I had a friend Jenny who had a chicken farm and quite often there would be eggs that they couldn't sell because maybe something had gone wrong with them and they could tell just by scanning them so she would pass them to me they weren't wonderful to blow the eggs out but um, I used to do hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of decorated hens eggs as well as decoupaging onto ostrich eggs and so I used to sell them in Namibia and I remember with absolute horror my husband used to take them up to Namibia for me because he flew up there and <laughs> one of the shopkeepers there said how do I know these eggs aren't going to break and he just took the box and he said he just dropped them on the floor none of them had broken because they were decoupaged and then that obviously had several coats of varnish on to give them a high glaze and I was absolutely mortified because I think he had about 300 hens eggs in there but um, I did a lot with eggs in the past quite interesting here this lady has done cross stitch on papers and things you would need to use waste canvas or something to give you the grid to be able to work with um, to do that um, it's quite a lot of work to do on a piece of paper so it would probably be something that she would frame I would imagine rather than putting into an album lovely um, story about a woman who has basically a toy hospital and I had a friend in Cape Town called Jeanette I'm sure by now maybe she has died but um, she used to repair dolls and things and I remember watching her fixing composition dolls and the amount of care she took and the time it took just to repair these dolls but they had to be perfect and it was wonderful and I've got my grandmother's old composition doll here for my granddaughter one day lovely little watercolor of a teddy bear and some sewing themed things and um, yeah collect all those things into themes because you find that if you do start collecting them they will be useful one day you'll have them all ready when you want to do an album lovely little illustration here of three little bears together and if you didn't want the doll here you could either just you know overlap it with the corner of a pocket or something like that these pages again with lots of writing take out some of these um, sentiments use them as little tags and then see what's on the other side of the page to see if you can make good use of that so for instance here I would rather use this page and this page has got a charming little girl planting seeds here 
So what could we get her to plant? Okay, so there's some little seeds and eggshells. I could cut out one of those and put it on a page with her bending down to plant those little seeds. That could be quite fun. Um, and then all these little strips obviously would be nice backgrounds for sentiments or whatever else you want to decorate with. These are stickers that peel off um, and you'll see that those are a nice adhesive backing. Um, quite a few of those. So what they've done here is to decorate eggs with them and to use them on brown paper as a washi tape. Um, but you could obviously use those in journals in another form of some sort. Lovely watercolour background. So what I might do with this one would be to cut that out and cut that block out, which leaves me that for um, something else. And then have that as one um, piece of ephemera and then cut out some of these strips and things that I could use for others. I could cut out a photograph here um, and just actually use that frame um, put something else in there, another picture of some sort. Lovely colours, I love that sort of sort of almost an inky blue isn't it and you've got the repeats here with some lovely images it's what they call a little shepherd's hut and i think now that i'm in the uk i'm going to book one one day and go on holiday here's another frame that you could use and another one there as well so if you cut those images out you could put something of your own Oh, lovely Art Deco things. Aren't these just gorgeous? And this lovely script that you've got up here with a lovely dress. This is just absolutely charming. And so many different things that you could do with it. Lovely sort of vintage cards that you could make use of. Okay, I don't know that I'd use too much here other than the borders as such. Um, but let's see what's on the other side of the page. Much more that I would use here. So again, I've got lovely borders that I can use. Um, always in the magazines there seem to be the theme of paint brushes. So I've got a brush that I could cut out and use. And for us that are creative, brushes are always something we do use. You've got various different backgrounds and scripts. So you've got loads of stuff here that you could actually make use of. And the same goes with this page. Yeah, really interesting pages. Now with these little Daphne's diaries, you could use them those as a little postage stamp. You could make little mini booklets to go into a tuck spot. Um, you could use them on belly bands. You could use them in combination with handmade papers. And then you've got these images here, which would be nice as stamps as well. Yeah, lovely, lovely words, little phrases you could put. You, you don't have to have your own um sorry you don't have to have this writing here you could put your own but you could use that number eight and then just superimpose your own wording here's a piece of writing paper this was attached to the book always make sure that you get this sort of sticky um latex stuff off quite quickly because it does leave a slight little mark and the longer you leave it the more likely it is to stain it but there's beautiful beautiful paper on either side of that um, here's somebody who makes also dolls and things um, with a combination of paint and fabrics. They're rather gorgeous, almost sort of old world nursery rhyme slash Beatrix Potter kind of characters. But here again, look, you've got lovely, lovely foliage that you can use, repeated up again here. You've got lovely textures, little images, and they're really nice and clean, so there's a lot that you can do. There. And then you've got this theme of the cherry blossoms starting to come through in all different formats and you'll see some more just now. This page again has quite a lot of different little things that you could use. All these tiny little pictures could be really nice little postage stamps even if you do cut some of them down. And they don't have to have a lot of um, imagery on them to be a postage stamp because by the time you've stamped it with a postmark on it, it's often quite enough. Here again, you've got things that you can colour. That's rather fun. And then stamping with fruit and vegetables on fabric or paper. Oh my word, that takes me back. So when I used to teach fabric painting, one of the things we did was a section on printing. And some of the fruits were just magnificent. Even things like celery, <coughs> if you cut um, the stems right down and then you've just left with this rose shape. They're really beautiful and we used to put um, on small fish, we used to put paint on and roll those on. So they give you a really 
lifelike impression um, for very little effort. I would just say that they don't particularly say here use fabric paints on fabric, um, which I would do. If you're obviously working on a canvas that's going on a wall, you could use an acrylic paint. But the fabric paints don't show up as being quite as heavy as these paints. And then if it is on something like a tea towel or an apron, you would need to heat set those most cases to make sure that they don't wash out. But it is a really charming way to get a design onto a bag. Doesn't this look gorgeous? And I was just looking at this one here. I don't know if you can see that one nicely, the sort of half or quarter piece of this apple. If you just had to put a little feeler on there, it would almost look like a little butterfly, wouldn't it? You could do it with these as well, make them into little butterflies. Oh, there we go. There's the celery that's been cut down. And then when it prints, it's almost like a little old-fashioned rose. They really, really are charming indeed. And another thing that I can tell you with fabric paints is don't keep your colours pure. Just keep them slightly slightly mottled um, and they will look more interesting here we go we've used some lemons i've done some good old-fashioned potato prints here i taught two young girls who were students at the time and they were really sort of quite anxious about learning to do fabric painting um, anyway they they did pretty well and they made some tablecloths and went home to their family for Christmas and sold them on the route, which was along the coastal villages on the way to a place called Hermanus. And they actually, between the two of them, got a rip-roaring business going. They got white beach umbrellas from a factory and they started painting those. And they were selling so well that they were actually exporting to Australia. So <laughs> these two young girls didn't know what to do. They were still studying and all of a sudden they had this flourishing business and I was absolutely delighted for them absolutely delighted lovely lovely pictures of venice lovely sort of different kind of feel to this but these lovely sort of aquatones in this boat and the fishing themes water all absolutely gorgeous and then you've got ways to recycle things by making paper i've taught paper making in the past as well it's really great fun you can use all sorts of things in there to give you texture from carrot tops to bits of onion skins to beetroot leaves Onion skins, which will give you red, blue, brown onion skins, which will give you more sepia colour. And yeah, we've done all sorts of things, including using those materials for dyeing eggs. Now, wouldn't we all like one of those, a little she shed? <laughs> what would you put in yours? Would you have gardening things or writing things or just a couch to lie on or maybe an art studio? I fancy one of those. My garden in Cape Town didn't lend itself to that, but... I did have a lovely garden, but I would really like to have one of those. And here's some more of that. So go to town, even if you will never have one in reality, you can have one in your imagination. And that's why we have an imagination. How oh, gorgeous. Okay. Here's a nice little thing that you could cut out as well. And then this page gives you just some ideas on how to do very sort of basic things, making a little bird, basically by making some just almost pom-pom shapes and then using some wire to make a little frame to make up a little heart shaped, it almost looks like violets on there, and then some bunny bunting. But look at that, that's a tag, isn't it? Or a label of some sort and there's another one. Okay, so you could use all of these things independently as opposed to having them all strung together. And then lovely ideas for doing these. So when I was doing my eggs, I did dye some of them as well. And I think I've just told you, we, we used some onion skins and stuff, but I made an egg, a hard-boiled egg that I had for over 25 years. And you say, how is that possible? But I learned it from a Greek lady. And what you do is you would take some beetroot leaves and you put your egg into a pot on top of dishcloths so that they don't bounce and crack. And then you put them on a low simmer once the water has started boiling and you simmer them slowly for about two hours. And what happens with the egg is that the white inside the egg seems to just almost disintegrate. And then you left with this hard little boil. So by the time the egg was a few years old, you just heard this little ball rattling around. And people were fascinated. There was no smell. It didn't go off, but it was a really hard, hard-boiled egg. <laughs> yes, 
There we go. Here's some more little labels that you could use. Another little frame you could use independently. And what a cute little idea for an Easter table to put eggs out that look like a bunny with a napkin as opposed to just the chocolate. Lovely Easter treats and some nice line drawings here of little feathers. Um, those you can use quite easily. There's runs down the side of the page here as well. These are pop-out recipe cards and I've talked about these in the past but just make sure that you keep those borders because gosh they're so useful. Um, I've made lovely tickets out of them. I've used them sort of as edges. You can emboss them. All kinds of different things. These are little pop-out chickens and they do pop out quite easily. You'll see that all the little edges are perforated and you just work your way around as they come out. I don't want to break the little legs. Yeah, so you'll see they'll all pop out like that. And then they make up these little decorations for the glasses. But look at the lovely colours of the papers that you've got on either side. So don't throw that away. Use that with your dies and with your punches to make up other ephemera. Now we get into the Japanese field things with the cherry blossoms. And you've got the lovely little paper lanterns and loads and loads of the little watercolour cherries. And these are just absolutely beautiful. I remember being in Washington one spring and walking along the river and all the cherry blossoms were out with all the little bulbs underneath. And it was just one of the most beautiful things I've seen in my life. But here in Japan they've actually arched these trees to make these lovely walkways. And yeah, it must just be amazing. I mean, I work in a field with fruit trees and... Um, it's March now and the apple blossoms are about to burst forth because already the hawthorn and the plum trees are blossoming. So they are pretty spectacular when they blossom, but these just look even better because they have all these lovely pinks. So I was looking at this page and I was thinking, it's so gorgeous, one wouldn't want to necessarily cut it up. But if you did, you could cut it lengthwise like that so that you would have that as a section and you could have that on the opposite side or you could cut it in half and then you could cut this off here so you'd have that as one little piece and then that is another piece it's entirely up to you but one can see how we go I quite like these sort of lines like a bamboo blind here um, and I think that that would be rather a nice background I might just put something else there um, but that's rather rather unusual and even these little eggs are fun so I mean this is like spot the difference but I mean you could use that just as a bit of fun for a piece of ephemera cut them out individually or use them all on their own oh and weren't chickens all the rage a while ago <laughs> I just remember that but these are lovely if you're doing anything to do with with animals or vegetable gardening and things like that you can certainly incorporate them and they've got all the names of the different kinds of chickens so you would be able to identify them as well lovely illustrations lovely things for gardening and again you could put your own pictures in here little rabbits aren't they just so sweet and a little teepee tent yeah. I think we all, as children, perhaps like to make tents. This is quite a nice substantial card. I mean, it is actually really, really thick. And it's got two different images. So for me, oh, hang on, I've even got two pages together, but it's even so, it's still thick. So you've got two pages that have got really thick card where you could easily cut that down. And I would say, let's see where the rabbit falls. Oh, that's a pity. The rabbit lies in the middle. I'd have to work this out. Um... I would want the rabbit to be seen, so maybe do a slightly off-center off little booklet there, and this one I could fold in half quite easily. And then these two, because you've got jars with vases, I might just fold that in half along that line and make that as a cover of a book. Could be quite fun. So with Daphne's diary you normally get a poster of some sort, and this one is particularly nice get the right way around so really large we'll just have to go through this section by section you've got some lovely butterflies and a little chicken more butterflies 
then you've got these rabbits, more chickens, rabbits in a teacup, and the one lying down. So for me, if I was to use this, I think what I would do is cut out these little watercolour images first, so that I could fussy cut out all the chickens, all the rabbits, and all the butterflies. And then I would be left with this lovely sort of almost French kind of look background. And I think that I would probably use this in sections. There's little birds here, there's flowers, there's leaves. And that could follow through on a theme um, if you were working in a book because you've got all of these things that are independent. So there's a load of stuff that you can actually use here. Sometimes the posters are designed in such a way that you wouldn't be able to cut it that easily, but this one you can. Really nice. I just love this. Look at the little rabbit here. <laughs> and this one... I mean, this is a real Peter Rabbit, you know, he's come in and eaten all, all the vegetables and now he's just fast asleep. But really super, super illustrations. Lovely little paper lantern that you can colour in. I think colouring is quite soft and gentle. And then here we've got lots of images. You could use any of those and fussy cut them out. And certainly these. And what have we got here? Fridge fridge things, making up goodies. This is for decorating eggs. So this one hasn't been perforated, but it is printed on one side. So if you didn't want to use the eggs, you could use that just as a paper. And similarly, if you didn't want to cut those as eggs, you'd have that, or you would have eggs or that paper. And if you did cut the eggs out, you've got all of the space in between where you could use those. And then, we get to the inside back cover where we've got these just gorgeous birds and the cherry blossoms. Really beautiful. And let's open up the cover all along. Just like that. So, what a lovely spread. And what a feast. And I'm looking forward to be playing, able to play with it. And I hope you've enjoyed it. And I will link some of the other videos I've done with Daphne's Diary magazines so that you can have a look at those too. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now.